Okay, now let's update the points again because it was two. Now it's going to be one based on where we're getting ready to restart. Green, white, checker. Here we go. Pace car is off. Denny Hamlin trying to fulfill a dream. Kevin Harvick trying to hold on for dear life. Kyle Busch, here comes the mad rush. And look at the 66 trying to get underneath Reagan. Looks like Kevin Harvick had a little bit of life in him right there getting into turn one. He made a dive at, at uh, Denny Hamlin. We've well, got those tires cooled off one last time, giving one shot at it to try to hold on. White flag is out. Denny Hamlin grew up just flag, clear by five. grew up just 15 minutes from here in Chesterfield, Virginia. Told us before the race, which stunned us, that he would rather this than any other race on tour. And oh, look at the contact! Kyle Busch gets bumped by the 66, and here he comes right back underneath him. But coming out of turn number four, Denny Hamlin fulfills a dream. Man, what a finish. They were dead sideways going into turn three, bumping and banging, and held on to it. And he just whatever it is now! You can just hear how much that means to Denny Hamlin to win in Virginia. Uh, he, you know, I, I never thought I'd hear a driver say, I'd rather win at Richmond than I would at Daytona. I'd rather win here than I would at the Brickyard. He wanted it bad. And boy, did he get it. Let's check in with Mike Massaro. And Marty, it doesn't seem to matter who drives this race car. For the third consecutive week, the 20 car in victory lane and with the third different driver. How are you able to put such successful, such competitive race cars on the track every week? We're in the right position at the right time for this one. Uh, we clearly had the third best car, the 1633 better. But it don't matter, man. We just won at Richmond with Denny Hamlin. Uh, this may be the sweetest victory I've ever had, uh, ever. And he grew up just 20 miles from here or so. What does this mean for him? I mean, you know him better than perhaps anybody in this garage. It means so much to him, I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> this, he's had a wonderful day. He just won the pole at FedEx number 11. And to come back and win the race, uh, I don't know. It's great. It's I can't tell you. It's just great. Marty, the call for tires, obviously the right one. And once again, Joe gets racing in victory lane for the fifth consecutive week. Marty. And you saw the confrontation with uh, Kyle Busch and Stephen Wallace. Now, Kyle did finish third, Stephen fifth. And here is uh, what happened. He looks in. Typical Friday night. Oh, Stephen grabs the helmet. I think two guys will be going to the trailer. And you may have to get your wallet out, Dad. There may be a fine. I'm staying out of this one. Uh, yeah, I hear you. Stay with us. Was for Kyle Bush coming all the way from the back to the front and excitement at the end. Always with you, Kyle, at the end. It's so exciting. But take us through the final lap and what happened with you and Stephen Wallace. Well, I mean, we had a struggling night all night. You know, we had to battle there in a, at the end of the race. And Stephen, I guess, got a better run off of turn two. And instead of, you know, turning low to pass me, you know, he just hit me in the back end there and drove into turn three. And he knew I was going to hit him, so he moved up the racetrack out of my way. And uh, we got through there, luckily, and we were able to come home third or whatever we were. I don't even know. But, uh, you know, when, when you bump somebody on the straightaway, if you want to play boys' games like that, you know, then it's every man for himself. And uh, I don't care. I'll wreck as many cars as I need to. So. Um, it, to me, I'm, I'm not going for points. If he's going for points, it's going to hurt him a lot worse than it's going to hurt me. You jumped out of your car and you went back and had words with him. What did you say? I basically told him that you mess with the bull, you're going to get the horns. And then he wanted to grab my helmet, which is, uh, you know, pretty childish again. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens here in the future. And if he wants to play those games, he's going to get hurt. All right, Kyle Busch, birthday boy tonight, turned 23. Let's go over and get the other side of what happened, Mike Massaro. And Stephen Wallace has just climbed from his car. What is your take on what transpired in that last lap between you and Kyle? I was just Richard, man. Here on a three-quarter mile racetrack, you're racing as hard as you can. You know, it's uh, just a green-white checker. I mean, uh, for what can you do? You know. But besides that, you know, our uh, Nick Chevrolet, uh, great your sons, Monte Carlo. You know, uh, ran really, really good. I got to thank John Bean and Susan Bean. You know, we finally pulled this top five off for him, and uh, it was just a good run for us. You know, we worked real hard over the off season, and uh, you know, we've had a lot of fast race cars just having things to show. You know, ran uh, ran tenth in Mexico and fifth here, so we're finally building some momentum that we can carry there at Darlington. So uh, just got to thank everybody at Trish, you know, RWI, and uh, I think Harold Holly and all those guys just changed my life and um, the whole race team around. He landed in the window after you guys came down pit road. What did he say to you? I don't know what he was saying, but uh, if I jerked him by the helmet and, and just rattled his cage a little bit, and know him, and, uh, just uh, just to tell him that I wasn't happy with it. You know, he's just a little girl about it. Uh, you know, uh, 
I don't know. I just think it's pretty bad, you know, when they call driver's introductions, everybody in the grandstands boogies. You know, uh, the, it's always for reasons, sore loser. But anyway, good day for Atrius Holmes and John Bean. Thank you. Well, Dave.